Okay, she's serious, yeah. she's smart, but she hasn't got a sense of humour. <laughs> yeah. It's great to meet you. Nice, Pam. Let's meet you too. Yeah, I've heard so much about you, by the way. <laughs> my love of the yeah. forest, my love of the animals, yeah. is 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 very easy yeah. to, to translate. But they don't have a voice. Right. So the voice tends to be the NGOs. Right. Okay. And they have a real role to play in in our industry as as basically the voice that's crying out mm -hmm. and and drawing things to your attention. And I have really nice people that are really wanting to be constructive right. and others who are more advocates and campaigning. Yes. And it's not it's not their remit to be yes. friends. It's their remit to bring to your attention and issues. But do you get that? Uh, all, all the time. Um, because, you know, I work in the textile and apparel industry and we are known to be the uh, second largest uh, polluter. Yeah. Um, in um, you know, in terms of industry, the first being oil and gas. Our fundamental disagreement with um, NGOs uh, who don't like us tend to be not where we need to go. Everyone agrees we need a sustainable fashion industry. Yeah. Okay, there's no disagreement, but we disagree about the pace um, and basically about the pace of change and how we get there. Today, everybody knows more. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, they're able to articulate their case so much better because you can, you can find out anything you want using the internet, including yeah. where our factories are, where the supply chain is, where material comes from, and so people become more active. But do you, so do you disclose that where the factories are? Do you, I mean, your supply chains. Do so you try and be completely transparent across? It? So within the Fung Group, um, we have several different business models. And the biggest, Lee and Fung, is ten, it's an agent. Yeah. So we're actually acting on behalf of other customers. And so the disclosure onus, you know, whether they disclose their factory list, is actually their decision to make. Our supply chains are huge. Right. You, you think they're not, but they go right the way down to the small single right. farmer. Mm -hmm. And drawing a line, producing, and we call them charters, because yeah. I think a charter is more, rather than a policy, it's more outward facing. Mm -hmm. but. Drawing the line on like deforestation as an issue with our suppliers, mm -hmm. and then getting them to sign on to right. that same charter, so that there is this robustness in the supply chain of all of you working together. We operate in in five countries. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I spent seventeen years in in right. Papua New Guinea, and there, there's no restrictions. So. Yeah. We had total disclosure because we'd mapped all of our smallholders, mm -hmm. 18,000. We disclosed where they were as well, right. with their permission, as an integral part of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. But Malaysia and Indonesia still considers release of maps of plantations as not in the national interest and against the mm -hmm. Official Secrets Act. And, and to be honest, I don't look good in orange, right. so I don't really want to go there. If we're not transparent enough about it, then we're, it's always left that reasonable doubt yes. and it makes you look a little bit shonky and we're not shonky we know exactly where everything is yeah. so why don't we just tell people right. why don't we show them why don't we let them see for themselves the whole um, apparel industry is working um, for one goal which is to be able to trace the entire supply chain and wow. be able to document wow. where all of our raw materials came from how much water waste yeah, yeah. Um, energy, etc., air pollution, and so on, was actually uh, used in making the product. That's going to be tough. Uh, actually, if you know, we already do a lot of audits of facilities. Right. So from facility level down to product level, it's basically arithmetic. The big problem is not that it's not possible, but it's rather that we have built a supply chain right. which functions for uh, efficiency, quality, value. Um, and to some extent today's speed, and now we're trying to add 
sustainability to it, and that's actually a different footprint. You think there's a, a role for blockchain in this, or are, are we overplaying that in yeah, this kind so, of? Yeah, so I mean, that's the whole the whole question is how good is your data? We are going towards the era of hyper transparency. Yeah, where at every company has to basically operate as as if um, anyone can see anything about your company, and then in Open that book. environment. You no longer can use information as as uh, your kind of arbitrage. You know you can't make you can't make money based on arbitrage anymore. It's very similar to what's happening in the smallholders. Mm -hmm. You know they have an option. They're a small family right. enterprise or business. Today I might sell to you. Tomorrow I may not. Mm -hmm. I might sell to you. So I'm finding that when I'm starting to physically plot the mm -hmm. supply chain, yeah. when I get down to the real granular level, I'm having to use probabilities mm -hmm. because. On a, any given day, right. this group may sell, but alternatively, they may not. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's making it quite difficult for me. Do you think actually um, the smallholders are becoming more powerful, or because they can choose whom they want to sell to? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think there's there's really any change mm -hmm. in their right. uh, ability to to swap. I mean, they're just looking after a family enterprise. Let's right. be honest. Okay. Um, I think there's a real change in the way that people see smallholders. Okay. And I think for a long time, particularly in Indonesia and Malaysia, it, it's been the smallholders. Yeah. And I think we need to get to a, a relationship, long-term right. partnerships, mm -hmm. in which they're our smallholders, they're part yes. of our supply chain. I was going to ask you about the raw materials, because mm -hmm. I mean, some of, yeah. like cotton, for example, has got a huge ecological yeah. footprint, mm -hmm. and that must give you some headaches sometimes. It's it's a it's a circular question. Yeah. Uh, on the one hand, yeah, cotton is um, it's a it's a resource intensive uh, crop and um, it uses inordinate amounts of water, and so we really have to find out a how do we use cotton that's less um, resource intensive and yeah. you know certain organics and certain um, farming techniques they are actually um, much less uh, resource intensive and so we have to basically drive sourcing to those kinds of cotton. Circular economy for textiles is going to be is going yeah. to be huge. I mean, if Asia is going to have 2 billion new consumers who want that middle class prosperous lifestyle, it's not fair for us to say, yeah, but you know, US and Europe have basically used up all our resources, so please consume less. We got to yeah. raise the floor of the entire fashion industry so that we can more sustainably give them and, and that people, choice. And people forget that at the, the bottom of the pyramid, mm -hmm. people are surviving. Yeah. yeah these, are, these are farmers and they mm -hmm. are surviving on that. And I think people forget, oh, you know, do more with less. And it's it's very easy when you've got the tools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't given the tools... You know, if we transform and nobody else does, we have failed. So our goal is use our scale to actually really disseminate that change through the industry and make sure that even companies who aren't working with us now, that they have that same knowledge so that actually we progress as an industry together. Another thing that we're noticing is that everyone is working on the same general things, but if we all kind of coordinate yeah. our actions, yeah. then actually the, the, the widespread impact will be greater and we'll be able to bring along more um, more companies who don't have that Cause, cause there's, there's that duplication and there's replication yes. and, it, and it's, it's wasting of resources. I mean. I've been involved in the RSP or the Round Table on Sustainable Palm Oil since its inception. And I guess in a sense, that was a kind of pre-competitive collaboration. Yeah. And now what, we're 11 years in, and from the standard actually being produced, and we're still only at 20%, and it makes me think sometimes, and it keeps me awake yeah. at night, that the other 80%, who aren't involved in this. The thing is, in any industry, there's going to be those who move first yeah. and those who never move, and then see like 70 or 80 percent in the middle who you want to move faster. The future that we all talk about, the sustainable fashion future, is actually something which can be good, profitable, um, you know, law abiding, and, and that we can still create all the jobs that we want to.